Lettuce and Succulent Growers, it's Lynn. And in today's video, this is part two of September's uh, Subscribers Question and Answers video. And if you didn't see part one that I put on last week, then do check that out. I'll link that video up above and down below in the video description. And this is part two. And there's also going to be a part three coming up in the next few days. So the first question then is from subscriber. Think, <laughs> you laugh at these guys. Subscriber called the Incredible Hulk Plants. What a great name. And they want to know, the first question is, I've got a few agaves, and I'll just show you my agave here. I've got a few agaves, and they have this scale-like rash thing on their leaves. Is my plant diseased, or is it from the sun? Now, if you have scale-like things on your plants, and I'll just show an example of this. This is my big agave filifera, and I have quite a few agaves as well in my collection. And sometimes you will see little tiny little spots on them. I don't know if I've actually got any to show you at the moment, um, but sometimes they'll form little tiny little sort of scale marks on there and sometimes this can just be down to the sun or environmental you'll see little sort of brown marks or little sometimes even little black spots and that's often either down to high humidity or other type of environmental things but it can also be down to um, an annoying insect called scale insect and if you notice that your agave this is my agave americana if you notice that there's lots of these sort of scales building up there's two things it can be. One, it can be like a form of environmental corking. And one can be scale insect. And the best way to find out what it is, is if you can use your nail and very, very carefully rub on the, the scales. And if they come off very easily with your finger, then that's a sign that it's scale insect. But if they don't come off, even just my habit you scrape and they're stuck on then it's nearly always down to just usually environmental factors from excess humidity sometimes just cold and sun can cause these little tiny like blisters i don't have any to actually show you an example of but i have experienced it in the past on my on my agaves as i have with some of my other succulent plants and usually these little tiny blisters will just scab over form a little brown scar or scab and they're pretty harmless it's not a disease if however you notice you have a build-up of scales and when you scrape them with your finger they do scrape off then that's scale insect and I haven't got this on any of my garves at the moment, but I have experienced it with many of my succulents and even cactus in the plant in, in the past. And I have made a video on how to remove scale from cactus plants and the same with succulent plants as well. And I'll link that video up above and down below in the video description. The best way to get rid of scale in my in my opinion is by using rubbing alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. And I usually put a little bit into a bowl with a little brush or Q-tip, soak the Q-tip and then rub it onto the, the scales. And it would just dissolve the outer shell and kill the insect underneath. Scale insect is very hard to remove with a normal type of systemics or anything like that because the, the plant spray, the insecticide, doesn't really... Uh, get into contact with the scale because the hard outer coating but rubbing alcohol would dissolve it on contact you can also use methylated spirits or even surgical spirit which you can get in many chemists that'll work in the same way you can even use vodka <laughs> if you have some vodka in your cupboard you can actually use a bit of that as well it will dissolve the scales but do watch the videos I've made on how to get rid of scale on cacti and succulents as I mentioned the video will be up above and down below in the video description now the second question from the incredible Hulk plants wants to know my Hawarthia alien egg succulent is covered in white marks is this mold now the Hawarthia alien egg is uh, sort of also known as Hawarthia cooperi and I've got one of mine here to just show you and it's nicknamed the, Al the Hawarthia alien egg because of its shape it's lovely sort of um, lovely glossy lovely translucent little leaves here, little rosette form of um, modified leaves, very beautiful plant. And 
the, the question to that will be, is it, is it mould if it's covered with white? Now, usually the most common type of white you'd see on succulent plants is nearly always down to mealybug. Mealybugs will have this really annoying woolly nest on them. So if you see lots of white little fluffy woolly nests on your plants, it's nearly always down to mealybug and this has to be treated again with the isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol or methylated spirit or surgical spirit in the same method I mentioned and I've also made many videos on how to treat mealybug with the rubbing alcohol so do check them videos out I'll also link them up above and down below in the video description so it's possible it could be mealybug and um, the Incredible Hulk's plants, do check out what mealybug looks like online and see if this is what you've got on your Hawarthia cuperi just to make sure that could be what it is. The other thing is, yes, succulents are very prone to getting what's called powdery mildew and they will form this and mine often come down with it. We don't have a problem in the summer but in the winter time I will I'll come in here and I'll often find some of my um, echeverias will have a little bit of a white powder on them. Now some succulents have naturally a white hue, a white powdery hue to them and this is normal but you'll know powdery mildew because it will look exactly like mildew and mould and it can you know not only does it cause your plants to collapse it is very disfiguring and, and horrible now when I get this happen on my succulents I have to come in and spray them with peroxide and I actually use 5% peroxide and mix it with water and I, I find it's very good I spray all the plants and within a day or two it's all all gone the powdery mildew I have to repeat it then with the peroxide a couple of days later and then often a third time to completely treat it and this works well I don't get powdery mildew on any of my cacti you know I don't have that it seems to be more of a succulent thing so this could also be what's happening with your Hawarthia as well and um, I have made a video also so about all these videos guys I made a video also on how to treat powdery mildew you on succulents. I think I show an example with one of my Kalanchoes because they're very prone to getting this powdery mildew especially in the winter time and I show you exactly how I get rid of it with the hydrogen peroxide so do check that video out links up above and also down below in the video description. Also the last thing it could be, it could actually be part of how the plant naturally wants to look. Um, this is my Hawarthia cooperii, commonly known as the alien eggplant. And um, maybe some of the white marks are actually part of how the plant looks. It shouldn't really have white, it does have beautiful variegation on it, as a lot of the Hawarthias do. And maybe that white part is part of the variegation on, uh, on yours. But it shouldn't be white and powdery anyway. If it's sort of white, white fluffy deposits or powdery deposits, it's nearly all either mealybugs or mould. So that definitely needs to get checked out. The next question by um, also by the incredible incredible Hulk plants wants to know. Um, does Hans still grow his wonderful chilli plants? I've seen them in some of your older videos. Well, the answer to that is no. Hans did grow his chilli plants for for a couple of years when we first moved up here to Belfast but he no longer grows them unfortunately and we just focus more on the cacti and succulents and the house plants. Now the next question is by my wonderful subscriber Benny and Benny wants to know I received a couple of severely dehydrated ferro cacti species <clears throat> to rehydrate them back to their normal state do I just water them as usual? Now these are my ferro cacti here and obviously when you receive a cactus it depends whether you get it when it's already potted up or whether it's bare rooted. Now if it's, po if it's potted up the first thing I would do if it's very dehydrated and shriveled is remove it from its pot because it's quite possible the roots are covered in root mealybugs and that's why the cactus is shriveling. Or it also could be the roots have died back, but there's usually a problem with the roots, nearly always a problem with the roots. So do get it out of its pot first of all. If it's come bare rooted and the roots look pretty much okay, then it could be that the roots have completely died back as well. Now, 
I've experienced this with some of my ferro cacti before that have just suddenly become dehydrated. I've got them out the pot and I found out the roots have just completely died off and they're dead. And I've had to give them a complete root pruning. I cut all the roots off pretty much back to the um, main part of the uh, base and it might be a bit drastic but then I've potted them up in very gritty soil and just lightly um, kept them pretty much it depends whether you have to do it during the winter or the spring or summer but if it's spring or summer then pot it up and then you have to introduce a bit of moisture very slowly just by giving a bit of a spray spraying the top of the cactus this is one that sort of more or less lost its roots as well which is why it's a bit red and I had to prune back the roots on this replant it in very gritty soil and then I just very lightly sprayed it with um, water with a plant sprayer just to keep the very very top surface slightly damp and also just to keep the, co the cactus from dehydrating any further and look at it now it's still a bit red but it's plumped out and it's fully grown its root system again it's really recovered so root pruning is something I probably would have to recommend if the roots are completely died back if you just put the cact if you water the cactus more thinking it's going to take up more water and there's a problem with the roots either root mealybug or the roots have died back then it's it's more likely going to rot because the plant won't be able to take up water if the roots are all damaged so I wouldn't recommend watering it more I'd obviously sort out what's going on with the roots and I, I would not really recommend root pruning cacti unless it's a drastic thing like that. But I do know there's, there's quite a few good YouTuber videos online of some cactus growers that actually prefer to prune the roots on their cacti every time they pot them, even though the cacti are perfectly healthy. And they have better growth that way. I'm not experienced enough on root pruning cacti to talk about that. I only do it if I have to do it because there's a problem with the roots. But when I've done it, it's always been a success. The, the trick is that if you prune back the roots is to let the cac leave the cactus unpotted for at least two days before you pot it up again because you need the, all the cut parts of the roots to completely dry over. And I have made a video when I have had to do this with, um, it was one of my ferro cacti, one of these, I can't remember which one now, it was quite a few years ago, but I show how to root prune um, cactus if that happens to the roots. So do check that video out also, I'll also link that up above and down below um, in the video description. Now if you check over the roots, and the roots are actually all healthy, it's all fresh roots and everything, and the, the cactus is still shriveled. It may have had too much sun and, and there's many 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 reasons for cactus that's shriveling but it can also be down to pests on the on the outside on the actual cactus itself so a ferro cacti are very prone to mealybugs and they will love to hide in all of these little ridges all going around the cactus so do check because even if it has a great root system you might find that there's mealybugs hiding in between and they're sucking out the energy from the cactus making it shrivel so it's something you have to have to be careful for so when it comes to um, dehydrated ferro cactus or any cactus it can depend on many things but always do start with checking the roots now the next question from Benny Benny wants to know what things do you look for when purchasing a new plant and when Benny actually put this question to me for the Q&A video, I thought it was such a great video that, and it's something I can't answer very quickly. So I've actually made a separate video on this. I did this probably a week or two, a couple of weeks, maybe even three weeks ago, on what to look for when buying a cactus. So I go into all that information in there. So that video will also be up above and down below in the video description. So do go and check that out because it covers many, many things on um, what things do you look for when purchasing a new plant. So guys, check that video out. The next question um, that Benny wants to know is, can a lack of winter dormancy prevent cacti and succulents from blooming? Well, the answer to that is yes, it can. And it does depend on the type of cactus. Some cacti 
uh, that are over can be overwintered in a much warmer environment and they're still pretty much guaranteed to flower for you um, example would be lophophorus I know many lophophora growers who have them on their window sills 24 7 all through the year and they don't really have a winter dormancy because it's warm in the house and they're still all flower in the spring and summer same with many other types of cacti as well such as the mammillarias but a lot of cacti and all cacti in general do like to have some type of a winter dormancy because the the cooler the cooler temperatures and the shorter days are what encourage them to go into into the bit of the hibernation the overwintering it also helps to strengthen the cactus for the following growing season and you're more likely to get flowers so yes and it certainly can prevent them from flowering as well if you're not able to give them a winter dormancy depending on the type of cactus you may find that you don't get flowers because they're not having that winter rest so it can the answer to that question is yes it can prevent them from flowering the following year but not necessarily with all cacti the next question is by um, wonderful subscriber terry gent and terry wants to know why haven't you gotten on the square pot bandwagon you can group a lot of more plant, more pots together and um, I want to I do want to see you with more cacti and succulents well I actually love square pots here's an example I've got one of my astrophytums in a square pot and also some of my others as well here I love square pots I think they look lovely and you can certainly fit a lot more on the tables when you have them in square pots when you have these round pots they take up a lot of space in between here as you can see and square pots can be pushed more closer together however square pots are not easy to find in my experience I have quite a few square pots and my plan is to when I do repot eventually put them all onto square pots it would be lovely but um, the reason why I don't is they're really hard to find and uh, they seem to nearly always get round pots especially when you're looking for a certain pot that you need for that size of cactus this is a lovely square pot and i bought a few of these recently and they're great as well but uh the answer to that question is the reason why i haven't got onto the the bandwagon of square pots is they're not easy to get where i live and um i do love square pots and certainly going to be looking out for more of them now the last question for today and this is uh, only going to be the last of a few more as I say there's going to be part three where if you're if you find you've asked a question for the September Q&A and it's not in part one or two do stay tuned for part three because it'll be in that that one and uh, Natalie this is my wonderful friend Natalie who lives in Dublin Natalie wants to know I have a leaf grown Hoya Kerry similar in size to yours its thick main stem is upright and very heavy and is struggling with its weight. Do you think its stem can snap under its weight? Will it eventually just become a trailing Hoya stem? And do I need to start attaching the stem higher up with some hook or something? I'm curious how you handle your sizeable Hoya Kerry. Now, I have three Hoya Kerry plants in my grow room and I'm going to take you upstairs to the grow room now and show you them and talk about how I support mine. Now here I am in my office and I've got my three Hoya Kerry plants here. Lovely Hoya Kerry variegated one and uh, this is, was my Hoya Kerry single leaf that was grown just from a single leaf and it has grown amazing lovely big trailing stem up here and this is my very sort of large Hoya Kerry growing all along the window and I actually have this supported with a bit of garden tie wire there that I have going up going up to the top so that supports it and also here as well because it would just grow and trail over now they are trailing plants so when Natalie wants to know could it snap under its weight well this is quite a heavy plant as you can see and that's why I've got it supported with this tie wire here in the window good news is that the um, stems are actually quite bendy they are quite strong and as they as they get mature they go more woody so they're very they will support they won't snap or they shouldn't snap but to hold the weight I do have a little support here tied there going up to the window just to um, give it the support so it doesn't all hang over but I've seen people grow Hoya Kerry's in hanging baskets where they just have all them all trailing all the way down so when they're young like this they sort of start off like this and um, they will then start to shoot out 
little sort of aerial roots here and they use these little roots here to attach themselves to um, to nearby vegetation to support themselves so it shouldn't snap under the weight no but do give it a little bit of support uh, Natalie with um, a little tie wire up to the window to offer it more support now will it eventually become a just a tra become a trailing hoya stem well it will do because this was my single leaf and when it's the first started to grow it sent a couple of little leaves and now it has sent this big um, trailing stem up here and uh, this will eventually it will go taller to then it will start to turn onto its side and grow exactly how this more mature one has done and that's when I offer it support so it, it as I say it won't snap it will carry on growing and then once it gets big enough and it starts to lean over to the side as this big one has done here just give it some support even hook it up at the top of a window there don't you can see the lighting's not good there and then just to offer the support that way and that should be absolutely fine so that's all the questions for part two and do stay tuned for part three um, of the question and answers September um, video coming up in the next few days and uh, thank you all guys for your questions if you haven't done already don't forget to subscribe do click that notification bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos you can also follow me on Instagram Twitter and Facebook at Desert Plants of Avalon and for more growing tips do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com I want to wish you all a fantastic cactus powered day!